Hi everyone, we're going to continue our study in Philippians chapter 2. In this video, we're going to wrap it up by looking at verses 17 through 30. Now, I'm not going to read verses 17 through 30 in this video, so why don't you take a second, grab your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 2, read verses 17 through 30. I know it's a lot of verses, but go ahead and read 17 through 30. Unpause the video, come back, and we'll uh, look at these verses uh, just a little bit to see what Paul is trying to tell us. All right, now that you've had a chance to uh, read verses 17 through 30, just a few things here that I want to go over uh, in this video to maybe help you understand a little bit about what uh, Paul is trying to say. So he's been really talking about earlier in this chapter how, we, uh, how the church of Philippi needed to be united. He talked about how we need to have the mind of Christ and how they could have the mind of Christ and what Christ's mind was kind of like. And then we, in the last video, we looked at how we need to, to do things without complaining, without disputing, because we are the light of the world for others to see. And so now in verse 17, he begins to come in, and he says this in 17, Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. He, he's really, when he says poured out as a drink offering, there was a practice among the Jewish people and the, the, non, and the pagans, I guess you would say, in their sacrifices. They would often pour out wine or perfume or, or some other things um, beside or over or upon an animal that was going to be sacrificed. And so when he's saying I'm being poured out, what he's really saying is, is that, you know, I'm in prison now. I'm being poured out as a sacrifice. I could probably be executed at any minute now. And so he's letting them know that, you know, I could be this sacrifice, but I'm being sacrificed for Christ. And look what he said. This is even greater. I rejoice in it. I rejoice. I could be sacrificed, but I'm going to be, re I'm going to be rejoicing. And you should be glad and you should rejoice in me. This sounds completely opposite of what we would normally think. How and why can we rejoice whenever Paul is about to be executed, possibly? How can we rejoice when there's persecution around us? How can we rejoice when we're going through hard times? We can rejoice because we have the victory of Jesus Christ in us already. Rejoice in Him. Trust. I trust in the Lord. I trust in Him. That's how we can have this victory. In the rest of these verses, he talks about sending Timothy to them and how he trusts the Lord to send Timothy. And then he talks about uh, his, uh, the, another um, gentleman that was sent to him to give him uh, the, the, off, the money, the offering that they were, they were giving him and how he had a near-life uh, or near-death experience here. And so Paul goes in and he says a few key words in these last verses, though. He says, I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord that I might send Timothy to you and that I might come to you. Everything Paul did, he trusted in the Lord. He really relied upon the Lord. I trust in him that Timothy's going to do the right thing. I trust in him that you're going to do the right thing at the church in Philippi. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to trust in him. And then he talked about uh, this brother, this fellow worker, fellow soldier, as he's called in verse 25, this messenger that the church at Philippi sent to him with probably money and a letter asking Paul, hey, what's going on? We're concerned about you. We're worried about you. We hear you're in prison. This is the man that Paul probably sent back along with Timothy with this letter to the, to the Philippi church. And he said in verse 29, Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such men in esteem because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. Look at this. Esteem him. Receive him with gladness. Esteem him because he worked for the Lord and it almost brought him to death. I don't think we do this enough in our world today. How often do we look up to men and women that serve Jesus Christ? Not just pastors and leaders in the church. There are many men and women that, that we don't see work behind the scenes in the church that serve Jesus Christ day in and day out. Maybe they're the type of messengers like this man was that normally aren't seen. But they're doing the will of God. They're doing all they can to serve Him the best they can. And normally they're the ones doing it with a smile on their face. God says, esteem them, be joyful for them, lift them up as they serve the Lord. One of the best ways we can lift them up is to pray for them. 
one of the best ways we can we can do that is to just pray for them that God continues to use them and make them an, uh, an example to others for Jesus Christ that they may be that light that Paul talked about in the previous verses also let them know that you see their work for God encourage them Go and tell them you're so glad that you see them work for the Lord and you're glad of the things they do. Be a completely different church in a completely different world if we as Christians went and we praised and gave uh, blessing and gladness to others that we see working for the Lord with sincere hearts. If we went and told them we were so glad and excited and it makes us proud to see them work the way they do. That would just be so great for those that work and strive to work for the Lord. So the next time you see someone working, maybe someone working maybe behind the scenes or someone that you know does a lot, not just in the church, but for God, for Jesus Christ, they live as a light to the world. Go up and tell them you recognize it, you see it. Tell them thank you for living that way. Pray for them. Let them know you're praying for them and then pray with them. Pray for them. And let them know that you are glad to see their light shining bright for the world. Let's be an encouragement to each other. Let's cooperate, be unified as we close out this chapter. And don't do things with complaining. Don't do things with disputing. But live a life trusting in the Lord, lifting others up, help showing others that you recognize the work they're doing, and let's let them know that we're praying for them and we will continue to pray for them as they do the Lord's work.